Hello everyone. This is Amber Two Thousand here. Welcome to my channel. Well, I play a variety of games. And do new relations for fanfics. I'm really hoping you, you enjoy my content. If you do, make sure to comment below, leave a like, and subscribe with the no locations on. Right, until next time, this is Amelie2000. Welcome to my channel. So, hi. Hi, hello. We're gonna get started with a new soy. I'll take a break from the main stuff I've been doing lately. This is called Sacrifice, a Life of Strange Soy. And this is the prologue. The Departed. The woman woman worked fiercely at the computer. She was lost in a world not her own. She was success and everyone around her knew she was. And that was okay by her. She would do anything she had to do to find her friend. No, not just her friend, her soulmate. Her desk was littered with newspapers and articles from magazines. She had some stories that were highlighted and dart aired. In some cases, pages were whipped from magazines. She had sacks of good reads and others that were just a waste of time. <laughs> Every story was similar in the good weed set. Gifts would talk about feeling like time was missing or time had been messed with. Some stories would even reference a woman who seemed from mysterious. And then it was a simple not no longer there. Some of the stories came from the supermarket tabloids. And a young woman thought it was like what that she now considered this news. Book sacks on the dust and the floor had tiles during the time, the butterfly effect, psychics, and a whole lot of terms she didn't understand. She even had books on the supernatural and from all around during the time and time loss. She knew some of these were researchers, written by so-called experts. Just to make some quick money, but she knew that everything she could read or learn might help. As the young woman woke up from her computer, she reached over and grabbed another story off of the printer. She turned and pinned it to the board, and she took a step back. She chuckled because the board was like something you would see in those detective movies. A giant wall map with scenes pinned all around, dated and numbered as if they were working for a missing person, and in a way, they were. It even had the portable screen con connecting the docks, trying to connect lead to lead. So far, no luck. So graze over the story again, the woman thought to herself that maybe this is it. They had been searching this whole time for well over a year, and now she found the best lead of all, Ogo was from one of those off-street magazines out of San Francisco. This is not a magazine she would normally read or even look at the pictures, but when she showed upon it, she knew what she was on onto something. And it was not what the Ogo said. It was what it didn't say. And that's the research she had read the Ogo one more time. Andrew Art, does the artist even matter anymore? By Natalie Sunder, San Francisco, California, October 28th, 2021. Today in a small art gallery in the mission area of the city, a new kind of art show is in development. Beginning tomorrow, the Kobe North Gallery will be hosting the first of its own, first of its kind Anonymous opso. That's why the office, well, in this case, photographer, is not known except to 
the gallery owner. No name, no bio, no space. No, n nothing. I know it's a wish, says the gallery owner, Warren David, but let me tell you, this young woman's photography is unlike anything I've ever seen. I said we cannot explain it, but I knew from the moment I first saw it that she felt brave enough to reach out to me. I had to host it. I asked her to describe it. Imagine a real life savage dolly. That's why right, you heard me c correctly. She could somehow bind her photographs like Dolly bit his art. Looks like time. Looks like she really bonds time. Been time. The young woman woke up for the paper, her hands sinking. This is it, she thought. This is what we have been working for. But she hesitated and tried to calm herself. Do not get too excited. How many false waves have I seen? But she knew this felt different, and she had to be sure, so she kept waiting. As for what, what she could tell us about the artist, not much, she replied. She also remained totally nothingness, but she did give me some details. Maybe she hates polypsy and wants to stay out of the public eye. She said that her photography comes from studying the human condition in a lifetime of loss. I knew by talking with her she has had a hard time, but that it it also served as her in a summation. I asked what she was and she said a love that could never be. Telling the pain in her voice, I did not ask anymore. I asked the owner if she had seen any of her photographs. Yes, of course, she sent me some examples. I asked her to describe them without a name to go on. I wanted to make sure that you, our reader, could get an idea of this upcoming show. She said that the photograph was just simple moments in time, but what makes it unique is the randomness of the pictures she takes. I really do not know how she does it. She seems to be able to kiss that quick, fast of time, that fitting moment that one has to, does to be damn lucky to see. Much less fast enough to kiss with a camera. How, how do, you, do you think she does it? I asked very interested and in a job at this point. She replied, I actually do not know, she laughed and said, obviously joking. Let's see is so sort of if a time master can rewind time. I have no clue. The young woman worked up, her heart was racing, her palms sweaty. She fell felt for the chair behind her to make sure it was there and realizing it was, she just fell into it. She looked at the org again and knew without that this was it. This is what she had been waiting on, searching for so many years. She paused. Reading the story about this gallery in San Francisco gave her days of view. She felt like she had been there in her other life, in other world. She quickly tried to dismiss the thought, but she couldn't. This feeling told her that this is what she was searching for. She knew what they had to do. Grabbing all girls, she ran to the other room, sitting on the couch, watching television was a beautiful young woman. Her hair was the color of a warm sunset, and her eyes the color of an only autumn forest. Gorgias would not even begin to drive her. She sat cross-bladed, gazing at the TV, television, attempting to guess the value of of the prizes on that game so people liked to watch. The Starbuck cup in her, her hand and the letter girl she wore indicated that indicated she had just returned from her morning one. The young woman put down on the couch next to her partner, her wife of these last few years. She threw her hands around her and tried to catch her breath. They hold her and laid her head on her shoulder. Way so Amber turned to her wife and embraced the welcome and fussing. What is it? What's going on? Are you okay? 
the other one is spotted. So sorry, but I am not just okay. I am hella okay. We saw. I found her. I found Matt. And Corey Price began to begun to cry. And that's the prologue. This is when you see it. You, the whole story is basically not cut up. It chapter is each chapter is by itself. But when you go to see it on Ao3, which will be linked down below in the comments, you'll see it. Basically, every chapter is basically one whole chapter. So <laughs> yeah, but no, I am separating the chapters. I am gonna do it. Because I'm not going to do this whole, was, whole, all the chapters in one video. I do. This video will be so long that it will take forever to upload to YouTube. I won't have trouble. I don't need to do that. So, yeah. So, yes, I'll be cheating, like, I'll do one chapter per video. And we don't want this video, basically. See you in the next chapter, or whatever ne my next video will be. See ya. Amber out. Hi, hi everyone. This is Emma 2000 again. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Because, you know, I, I really did enjoy making it. But, so I hope you enjoyed it. Comment, like, and subscribe with the notifications on down below. Till next time, bye!